You are now listening to Chakras and Shotguns. When I talk to people about preparedness, one of the first things that I hear from folks is that they don't have any space for prepping supplies. Their attic, garage, closets, all of it filled to the brim, mostly a lot of crap, (laughs) but they really don't know where they can put extra food or water, which can be kind of bulky and take up some space. So space constraints are definitely something that me and our family encountered when we made our move this summer and we had to downsize our living space. In today's episode, we'll share some things we learned to help you be more prepared, even if you're living in a small space. This is Chakras and Shotguns, the podcast that guides you on a journey of spiritual development and personal preparedness. I'm Jen, a former lawyer, yogi, and human design lover. And I'm Mick, a marketer, energy healer, and prepper. Before we get into it, we wanted to share a product that Mick and I recently tried. Like everybody, we wanted to make some changes to our habits heading into 2023. Yeah, one of the things we talked about and I'd say labored in thinking about was trying to reduce our reliance on caffeine. And look, I'll be honest, I'm more reliant than Mick is. In fact, I was at our oldest daughter's school for a Halloween event. I dropped her off, went and got Starbucks, came back. And I overheard my four-year-old telling her friend, that's my mom, she needs coffee every day. So we were overdue for reevaluating our whole life. But we're crazy busy with parenting, running businesses, doing this podcast. So we needed something that would keep us productive, but didn't have that crash. So that's when we discovered Magic Mind. It's a two-ounce shot that contains matcha, lion's mane mushrooms, cordyceps mushrooms, ashwagandha, and other natural ingredients. We've tried it at different times a day, and it's actually been a really nice addition to our routine. I like that it doesn't have that harsh spike of energy that you get from coffee, so it's more like this sustaining energy as if you just got an amazing night's sleep, or if you're like me, a great power nap. And if you still miss the ritual of coffee, I've been pairing it with a decaf latte that I make for us. So that's been really nice. Yeah, I think for me, I just kind of felt super focused and locked in, which was great, especially when I'm doing things like researching for a podcast episode, uh, working on a marketing plan for one of my clients. So we definitely recommend it. And we recently partnered with Magic Mind so that our listeners can receive a discount. Yeah, so if you guys want to give it a try, you can go to magicmind.co slash shotguns, C-H-A-K-G-U-N-S. You can use that same code, shotguns, C-H-A-K-G-U-N-S, to receive 40% off a subscription or 20% off a one-time purchase. The 40% off, though, only lasts for 10 days, so hop on that now. Hurry up. All right, now that we're all energized... Even at the thought of trying Magic Mind, let's get into some breath work. And today's theme, if you're new here, when I do the breath work, I tend to work on whatever I'm working on. So today's theme is going to be about trust and how often that needs to really start within and how You can make leaps and bounds in your healing journey, in your confidence, and how you move throughout the world when you have trust in yourself and trust in your truth because you dictate what your truth is, all right? So if you can, find a comfortable seat. I will always advocate for laying down if you choose. And let's take some deep breaths together. Inhale in through your nose, expanding your belly. Hold at the top. And let's exhale out through the mouth. All right, let's do that again. Inhale in through your nose, 
If you're sitting, maybe sitting up a little bit straighter. Maybe rolling your shoulders up to your ears, down your shoulder blades, holding at the top. And then exhale out through the mouth. Letting all of that air go. Let's do it one more time. Inhale in through your nose. Holding at the top. And this time we're going to seal the lips and exhale back out through the nose. Now that we've taken some breaths together, I'd like to invite you to put one hand, preferably your right hand, on your belly and your left hand just to the right of your physical heart. That's where your energetic heart or your heart chakra, that's where that lies. And I want you to breathe normally, noticing the sensations in your body. Noticing where you may feel tension, where you may be holding, where you may feel anxiety. And just breathe through those sensations. Perhaps if your heart feels a little anxious or you feel a little uncomfortable, just holding yourself in this way. Breathe into the areas where you're feeling that tension. Now, let's wrap up our breath work by giving ourselves some gratitude. Gratitude for this body. Gratitude for this spirit, this soul. for carrying us through this journey of life. And if you would like, you can say out loud or mentally to yourself, I trust myself. I trust my truth. I trust my experience. All right. Thanks, Jen. Let's get into the main topic. So I thought it would be important to discuss something that you and I had to confront in our move to L.A. We had a good-sized three-bedroom office, nice big backyard, big garage in Dallas. And then we came all the way to L.A. and we had to adjust to being in a smaller space and really trying to figure out how we can adjust our prepping. And I feel like What we did and what we still need to do is helpful for folks who are renting in general or who have smaller spaces. So today we've organized our top tips for prepping in smaller spaces. Yes. And also shout out to anyone who's downsizing because something that was surprising to me was how much of a black hole the garage was. I was like, oh, you know, we don't have so much shit in our garage that we can't park both cars. Like we could park both both of our cars in the garage. I thought I had a handle on packing up the house. And then you started working on the garage. <laughs> and I was like, oh, me has a lot of shit. <laughs> so I think that brings us to the first point, right? Okay. So the first thing that I think we should be doing when it comes to prepping for small spaces, I don't know if you hear those sirens, that's the the purge siren going Mm -hmm. off right now. (laughs) And it's purging all the crap that we have, right? Mm -hmm. So you're talking about the garage, right? I, in the course of that move, gave away slash threw away slash donated a ton of stuff that I wasn't using, didn't need, definitely didn't need moving from having a, a full yard to coming here. Yes. Yeah, so I think throughout the house, we were going through and finding all kinds of knickknacks, random cords. You know, everybody has that box of cords. They don't know what it belongs to. Mm. Has some of those old decorations from parties, random costumes, 
and clothes that we definitely didn't need anymore. Now, I was the inspiration for this, but Mick also got into the Marie Kondo method. If you're not familiar with Marie Kondo, she's a Japanese organizing consultant. She wrote a book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and she even has a Netflix show. Basically, she tells people how to get rid of junk. And if you want the cliff notes, it's does this bring you joy? Yes, I was going through holding up stuff figuring out if I still wanted it, if it brought me joy, and getting rid of tons of clothes. The point is, you probably have more than enough space for preps. You just need to get rid of shit. (laughs) You'll thank yourself later when you have what you need for an emergency instead of that random box of stuff that you even forgot was in there that you've gone through six times and there's nothing in there that you need. That random stack of gaucho pants from 2004 (laughs) That, you know, are no longer in style, but maybe they'll come back in style. But God, please, no. So (laughs) you can make room. So, yeah, now that you've gotten rid of your gauchos and your other random shit, you should have some space. So you might also, though, want to look at adding some additional storage. So we love a plastic bin. We use them. They're really versatile and we can hold a lot of things like food and other supplies. But we even got a weatherproof outdoor locker that fits really well on our patio so that's also something that i've used to hold some of our items as well we'll link that one in the show notes just a warning it's a little bit of a pain to put together but it works really well for our space just have a buddy to help you put that together it's kind of like this weird jenga jigsaw puzzle of plastic but Once it's all put together, it's really cool. There are a ton of other options out there as well on sites like Amazon, Home Depot, and Walmart. Yeah, I think that one in particular works really well for our space. So find the one that works best for you. So now that you have some space for your prepping gear, what should you put in that space? The thing that's going to take up the most space when you start trying to figure out where to put your preps is going to be water. Mm. And we had a big 55 gallon drum mm. that I'm still sad I had to to let go. It was my baby. We spent a lot of time filling that thing up. We sure did. I streamed at least three episodes of Real Housewives trying to fill that thing up. <laughs> but we couldn't bring it with us. And so we had to get creative about what we could actually have uh, in store here in our new space. And so we leaned into the stackables. And so back in episode three, We talked about there's these five gallon stackable containers of water that Mm. you can purchase and we'll relink those in the show notes. But because of the fact that they're a little smaller, they can go underneath furniture or behind something or in a closet, wherever you need to to put them, they're a little more forgiving in the area that they take up. So I will say of the things that we have to prepare for, and we're going to get into some more of them in this episode. One of them that stresses me the F out is water because, make you know, I drink a lot of water. Yeah. And I have raised these children of ours to drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And we go through so much bottled water in our house. So that is uh, potentially a very stressful event. It stresses you out. How do you think I feel? I know. You can be like, don't be trying to hydrate now. We in a boil water notice. Yeah, you, better you better sit down. You take a few sips and pass. Child, like, the news going to come by. My lips going to be dry. Face cracked. <laughs> uh, I also want to say the water bob is a big thing for water in small spaces. It is, for those that don't know, a collapsible plastic container that you basically put in your bathtub and you can use it to fill up water from your bathtub. It's great if you live in an area that has tornadoes, hurricanes, things that, you know, you kind of get a little bit of a warning for. So you can throw it in the tub, fill it up, and you have clean water available to you if the power went out or if the power went out at the water pumping station and you weren't able to get water into your home after a storm like that. Uh, So great option there. So, of course, you know, we keep in contact with all of our family back home. And there were some storms in Texas a few weeks ago. And there were concerns about the water. And I think this is a great time to talk about how you think about, oh, there's a thunderstorm and the power is out. So I only have to worry about 
electricity. I'll just get some candles, no Wi-Fi. We'll make shadow puppets and we'll just keep it cute. And no, because the infrastructure in this country is garbage. And you could very well find yourself where your water treatment plant can't function because it doesn't have electricity. And for whatever reason, they don't have any backup generators. Solar panels is out of the freaking question. And now they can't treat the water. So the water coming through your pipes is trash. And they're talking about you have to boil it. But baby, how am I going to boil the water if I ain't got no lights? <laughs> so like, it's like, now I got to have gas. Do I have enough gas? Yeah. And so like, you have to, not to be an alarmist, but like, you think that it might just affect one thing. And, and I think that's the whole purpose of the show, right? Is that this is about how you can make sure that you and yours are covered if the infrastructure or the government doesn't have its shit together, which... Mm-hmm. It can happen for sure. Any day of the week. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like this is something that you really kind of have to prepare for. It's just something you have to think about. It's not just good enough to be like, I have food and candles. Yeah. When you might not have anything, any water to drink. For sure. Yeah. So I think to your point, Jen, you definitely need to have something on hand that you can use for water purification. One option that doesn't take up a ton of space are water purification tablets. And there's a lot of different brands out there, but the brand that we have is Potable Aqua. You can find them pretty much at any sporting goods store or online like Amazon. Yeah, these are basically little pellets that you add to your water. So you drop them in. After five minutes, you can shake it up. And then you wait another 30 minutes. So don't do this like right when you're like parched and like desperate to drink some water or bathe. But you wait another 30 minutes after you do the little shimmy shake. And then they will kill any harmful bacteria in the water. Shimmy shake, yeah. Yeah, you shimmy shake it a little bit and, and you get to go. Um, the, the package is super small, though. It weighs like two ounces. A lot of backpackers will take it with them when they're out you know, hiking. And they may come upon some water source that you know they want to refill their bottle with. They'll drop it in there mm. uh, and use those. So very, very compact You can put it in like a kitchen drawer and have it available whenever you need. Mm. You know, I wish they had something like this to turn Dasani into like (laughs) Fiji. Not the Dasani slander. (laughs) I mean, we all know the truth. (laughs) What if Dasani wants to sponsor us one day? I'm not going to take that check. I have integrity. I'm not selling out. (laughs) Look, man, if all you got on hand is the signing during an emergency, please drink it. Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> if I'm nothing else and I'm going to die, that product, I guess, will do. <laughs> all right, y'all. We'll move on. All right, so let's move on and talk about food. Do you want to talk about some of that delicious emergency food that you tasted way back when? So one thing about me is I love food. I'm a foodie, if you will. And I think about random meals that I have had all the time just random bites that I've had in my travels in my life okay that emergency food is not going to make the cut however (laughs) it will provide sustenance in a time of need hopefully I'm at home with my collection of salts and various seasonings but yes, we did a YouTube video. It feels like ages ago. We yeah. did this YouTube video where we tried a bunch of different emergency foods out. They come in like really handy types of storage containers. So they're really good to kind of like just put in a closet in the bag. You can stack it, stack other stuff up on it yeah. and it's just kind of ready to go. Yeah. So that's really nice. Again, it's emergency food. This is not going to be like a five-star chef prepared meal in a bag. Okay. That's not what this is. This is so you can live. Yeah. So the two brands we recommend were the ReadyWise and the Mountain House brands. And they're really good in terms of efficiency. So you can get a 104 serving container. That's about 10 by 10 by 13 and a half inches. And it only weighs about eight pounds. So really easy to go into a small closet, into a shelf, or even on top of your refrigerator mm. if you needed to. So great for small spaces. So we've talked about water. We've talked about food. We've somewhat touched on this. Can you guess what it is? It's power. Absolutely. So lights going out, rolling blackouts. We see this a lot. We had a few outages back in our house in Dallas. 
and we miss those rooftop solar panels. Baby. There was like one very small brownout, I guess. It was just like some weird fluke. A signal light was out up the street and our power was out for like 15 minutes. And I spiraled. I was like, I had solar panels at my house. I don't know what's going to happen with the refrigerator, all the food. And I just kind of panicked and it came back on, thankfully, but it definitely put it front of mind that we needed to figure out some options. Yeah. So we kind of went back to the drawing board, trying to figure out what is the best option for renting in a space where you can't put solar panels on the roof and wanting to be able to have something that doesn't take up a ton of space. And so there are two brands, Jackery and Anchor. And they make these portable backup power units. So they have one, the Jackery 2000. It outputs about 2,200 watts, which is like it could run a refrigerator for around three hours. It's around 15 by 11 and a half by 12 inches, weighs about 45 pounds. So not that big. You know, it could fit on a shelf or in a pantry or something. The bigger one is the Anchor 767 powerhouse. It's 20 by 10 by 15 and a half and weighs about 67 pounds. It has the largest battery of any portable backup power unit on the market and you can even buy an additional battery to double the output so pricing on those two units it all depends on how many foldable solar panels you purchase with it Mm. so they come in bundles you can get like one panel two panels three whatever and obviously the more panels you get the faster it charges up and so i think the lowest was around like 2500 and the highest was around like six grand Mm. depending on how many panels you get for each one obviously i think the powerhouse the anchor one that i said is bigger costs more than the smaller jackery one so you can check both of those out we'll link those in the show notes so you can see what those are looking like if you're not ready to make that investment also just in general try and be nimble so there was a storm i don't know if everybody's seen the storms that have been hitting the west coast we were concerned about the power going out then we had candles on deckington And then I also ran to the store and got a bag of ice just in case we needed to put some things on ice out of the refrigerator for a little while. And we could have re-upped, you know, it wasn't a, it didn't seem like a super dire multiple day type of situation, but we just knew we had to be a little bit nimble if we were going to navigate around not having power. So we were charging our phones before we went to bed just to make sure they were like at 100% in case anything went out in the middle of the night. All right. So now that you have your food, your water, and you got your backup power, your mm-hmm. lights are on, your neighbors is looking out the window like, Why? who got the lights on over there? Mm-hmm. They want to run up in there and try to get on your, your prepping supplies. Maybe you're nice and you want to let them in, but maybe it's somebody you don't want to let in. What are some things you can do? If you have a small space, you, it's, it's not a property that you own, like we had in Dallas where we had our reinforcements on the door. What can you do to, to keep unwanted folks out? Yeah. Even if you don't have power, if the power is out, your ring, your Simply Safe, your ADT, that might not be functioning as well as you would like. So you might have to go analog. At our place in Dallas, we had a reinforced door. We had extra locking devices on certain doors and we're renting in California for now. And so we didn't really have the options of installing extra devices on doors and windows because we want that security deposit back. Okay. So we opted for using master lock door security bars on the main entrances. And they also can be modified so you can slot them in that space for a sliding patio door. So if you were to try and break in on the sliding patio door, you could not slide it back. It wouldn't move. So we'll link those in the show notes, but basically the security bar, if you're going to use it on a regular door, they are long metal bars with like a little pronged type of thing that goes around the doorknob. So that wedges in between the door and the floor, and it makes it pretty much impossible to open up the door, even with force. Yeah, I was actually a little skeptical about these because I did some research and there were some videos on the internet. People were kind of giving them bad reviews, showing how they could still open their doors once they had the security bar in place. But what I actually found in using them is that you just really need to make sure that you adjust the length of the bar and test it on your door over and over again until your door doesn't open. 
So basically you wedge it in, unlock the door, and then you tug it to see if, if it will open. And once you get it to a point where it doesn't open, that's the correct length. And then you can go ahead from there and, and continue using it. So definitely like utilize those because security is always paramount, not just if it's like emergency or a natural disaster because people are crazy out here. Okay. So be careful. We're going to wrap things up and get out of here. But before we go, we want to remind you to sign up for our mailing list. You can find that on the website, chakrasandshotguns.com. We're super excited because we're about to roll out a brand spanking new email newsletter. And in that newsletter, we'll be sending out tips for prepping, as well as some great spirituality related content like astrological events and how you can best harness that energy. We'll also be sending out even more in-depth product recommendations. So any cool products that we like, we'll definitely detail those in the newsletter as well. All right, guys, as always, if you have a question, please email us at chakrasandshotguns at gmail.com. And finally, if you're loving the show, please subscribe and give us five stars wherever you listen. Namaste. Namaste.